Hey guys, today we've got something exciting on the bench. It's a piece of hardware that's been on everyone's lips in the gaming community. The new NVIDIA RTX 4060 series card. And yes, we have the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte version here with us. This card has stirred up some serious conversations and we're eager to explore Nvidia's promise of performance uptick, particularly with DLSS 3 and ray tracing enabled games, not to mention it's supposedly a power saver when compared to its predecessor. On the other hand, they also announced 16 gigabyte version and it will cost an extra 100 US dollars, which has people frustrated, but that won't be out for a few more weeks. In this review, we'll be putting on the RTX 4060 Ti through its basis. We'll be covering its specs in detail, checking out real world performance and seeing if it lives up to the promises Nvidia has made. We have heard about the changes in the memory bandwidth and the increased L2 cache. So we'll be digging into how these changes affect gaming performance and what they really mean for you. So sit tight, get comfy and let's get into the nitty gritty of the RTX 4060 Ti. It's time to see if the hype is real. Let's start with the outside and work our way in. The 4060 Ti Founders Edition card seems to be the same size as 4070, but now is in silver color rather than gunmetal gray. It has the same size fans and the same ports on the back, three display ports as well as single HDMI. Curiously, it also weighs about the same, which makes me think it's just a different color scheme. Just like the other 40 series cards, it features the new power connector with the converter in the box. This one is just a single 8 pin adapter. Since this card is rated for lower power, I can see how having the same cooler as 4070 would probably be beneficial for the end user, as more cooling capacity per watt is going to let the card boost to the max and stay quieter, but we'll have to check that out slightly later in the video. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, please consider subscribing for more tech videos like this. Next, let's dive a bit deeper. The RTX 4060 and RTX 4060 Ti graphics cards are the successors to the RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti respectively, and they come with several key changes. A significant change, as we mentioned earlier, is the memory interface. While the RTX 3060 Ti has 256-bit memory interface and the RTX 3060 12GB featured a 192-bit interface, both RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti are limited to 128-bit memory interface. This could potentially impact their performance under certain circumstances due to the reduced bandwidth. However, Nvidia has attempted to offset this by greatly increasing the amount of L2 cache. The RTX 4060 comes with 24 megabytes of L2 cache and the RTX 4060 Ti with 32 megabytes compared to the 3 and 4 megabytes of L2 cache on the RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti respectively. As for the RTX 4060 Ti specifically, it features 4,352 CUDA cores, 48 ROPs, 136 Tensor cores, and 34 ray tracing acceleration cores, paired with 8GB or 16GB of GDDR6 memory. This particular card has a two slot design and is rated for 160 watts. I'm curious to see what the partner cards will look like. Of course, like the other 4000 series cards, it features DLSS 3, AV1 encoding, in this case a single encoder, just like 4070, and the aforementioned Tensor and RT cores are now the latest generation. Okay, that's probably enough with the specs. Let's get into the benchmarks themselves. One thing to note, Nvidia has advertised this card as a 1080p maxed out settings cable, but we will see what else we can do in some of our titles. For reference, we're running our test on our AMD 7700X testbench. Our graphs will be sorted by overall performance, which includes average FPS, 1 percentiles, and FPS per 100 watts combined. This is important, as in some cases like Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, we will be higher on a graph than 3080, and it's because it's much more power efficient, even though the frame rate is not as high. That being said, this 60 series card is delivering a comfortable 141 FPS on average and 180 FPS on 1 percentiles. When turning on 1440p, we also get pretty good results, reaching over 100 average FPS and 90 on 1 percentiles. This is with maxed out settings. Yes, it is 35% slower than 4070 here, but it's also much cheaper. When it comes to 4K, well, I would not recommend using this card here without some sort of upscaling. In Borderlands 3, we see a very similar story. 4060 Ti is hitting above 110 average FPS and 90 on 1 percentiles, making a great experience for 1080p. Going up to 1440p, it is also possible since it's not particularly fast paced. 80 FPS is plenty with lows dipping to 67. As for 4K, the performance here is not even worth mentioning. Moving on to the next game, Shadow of a Tomb Raider, which is a bit less demanding. 
here we're seeing an impressive average of PS of 166 with 1 percentiles at 144. If you're gaming with a high refresh rate monitor, these results should be more than satisfying. However, bear in mind that this game has been out for a while, which is part of the reason why the performance is so stellar. Same goes for 1440p. Here we have about 110 average FPS and around 100 on 1 percentiles. Still a very good experience and if needed, you can reduce the settings ever so slightly. Now when it comes to 4K, things get a bit challenging. You'll find yourself needing to dial down the settings considerably or resorting to upscaling to maintain playable frame rates. Personally, I recommend sticking to 1440p for optimal balance between resolution and performance. Next we have a more modern game, Formula 1 2022. Historically, we've only used this to review high-end cards, so we don't have the results for lower resolutions for the other cards. These are being retested for future reviews, but here with the both highest settings and ray tracing enabled, we've had to use DLSS and honestly, it's not that bad. With DLSS 2, the 4060 Ti actually has some more playable frame rates, but this is where we'll find some issues with the upscaling. Both 4070 and 4060 Ti are having performance issues when enabling frame generation, and it's something that's broken on a game side, so don't expect every game to behave perfectly at all times. For a more realistic use case, here are the results including 1080p and 1440p, with and without upscaling. As you can see, at 1080p with ray tracing and maxed out settings, 4060Ti delivers almost 100 average FPS and 71 FPS on 1 percentiles, but that can be doubled with DLSS 3. In this game, this card does well as is, and upscaling provides flexibility should you wish to play with higher resolutions. Switching the gears to a considerably more demanding game, Cyberpunk 2077. Without resorting to upscaling, the gaming experience is less than ideal. However, once enabling upscaling, things get significantly better you'll find you can enjoy a smooth gameplay at 1080p and with some adjustments even at 1440p, which is quite impressive. The significant performance leap from DLSS 2 to DLSS 3 is undeniably one of the major selling points of 4000 series cards, and it's quite evident when playing games like Cyberpunk 2077. Before we get to the power of thermals and acoustic testing, let me share a few production results. First, starting with V-Ray. Here we have benchmarking using CUDA, and we get a score of just over 1300, which is about 26% lower than RTX 4070. In the Blender benchmark, we see it being about 25-28% to slower, which is pretty expected. But to be honest, this is not the best card to use for any kind of production workload, as it's just too slow and ultimately time is money. Have a look at this Blender render. Here the difference is 32% or 34 seconds. At this point, it makes more sense to spend extra money for faster GPU, especially if you're using it for revenue generating tasks. This leads us well to the things that this card shares with the rest of the lineup and is really good at, its power efficiency. For this, we ran TimeSpy Extreme on loop and measured power consumption using Nvidia PCAT. In our lineup, it came in third, just behind 4070. While it may not be the most powerful card on the block, it certainly makes up for it in its efficiency. Throughout the test, it is drawing between 130 and 180 watts, which is significantly less than RTX 4070, which hits above 220. This results in lower GPU temperature overall. The difference here is about 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. When it comes to the noise levels, it's actually quite difficult to pinpoint an exact reading, as it falls below our current noise floor of 36 dBA. However, even when I get up close, it's barely a whisper. I can sit right next to it, running a stress test and hardly hear a thing which really highlights the benefits of having a large cooler. Similar to 4070, this card would fit perfectly in a small form factor build. Speaking of which, we've got something really special in the pipeline that you don't want to miss, so make sure you stay tuned. To sum it all up, Nvidia has yet again released a card which is just a little bit better than the cards before it, but it also features new technology which is certainly separating it from AMD and Intel GPUs. Also, we were pleasantly surprised that the changes in memory architecture did not prevent this card from performing well. While people were expecting this card to be cheaper, I think we should be really happy that Nvidia did not place a $100 premium on it, just like it did the rest of the lineup thus far, and released at the same price as last gen. Overall, this is a great 1080p card, with potential to play high-end games at 1440p if DLSS is supported. So what are your thoughts on this? Are you considering purchasing the 16GB variant, or you're more inclined to stick to the 8GB model? I'd like to hear your opinions in the comment section below. Also, check out the links in the description box for more information on any of the items cut in the video. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.